All right, welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Libwit, and this is another video for our series of training materials for Theogen's Terra workflows for SARS-CoV-2 genomic analysis. In today's video, I'm going to be diving into our Titan workflows for SARS-CoV-2 genomic characterization. I'll start off by presenting some background information on the intended purpose of these workflows and how they work, and then we'll jump into a Terra workspace to see how to use these workflows. In this video, we'll cover a lot of similar content to the Titan Illumina Paradigm V1.2.0 release video, but with a broader focus on all of the Titan genomic characterization workflows, not just for the Illumina data. All right, so with that, let's get into it. Okay, so to begin, let's again frame this video with the three major challenges to SARS-CoV-2 genomic analysis for public health. That's genomic characterization, sharing data, and genomic epidemiology. The Titan workflow series addresses both genomic characterization and genomic epidemiology, but today's video will dive deeper into the workflows for genomic characterization specifically. So the Titan workflows for genomic characterization include four separate workflows that take sequencing data from four different sequencing approaches, both paired N and single N Illumina data, Clear Labs read data, and ONT data. Currently, things are set up with the assumption that these SARS-CoV-2 reads are made using the Arctic V3 tiled PCR protocol prior to sequencing. There are ways to modify the Illumina workflows to use different primer files, but for both Clear Labs and ONT data, Arctic V3 reads are the only data that can be analyzed, at least for now. Okay, so with these input data, these Titan workflows generate SARS-CoV-2 genome assemblies, provide metrics to gauge the quality of those assemblies, and provide some genomic characterization through Panglin and Nextglade typing. And despite taking in data from four different sequencing platforms, all four Titan workflows for genomic characterization perform the same basic steps to generate these outputs. To generate the consensus assembly, all four workflows map reads to the Wuhan 1 reference genome, remove primers from that alignment, and then generate a consensus genome from that primer trimmed alignment. During this analysis, all four workflows will generate quality control metrics for both the read data and the generated assembly. And with that consensus assembly, each workflow will perform clade and lineage typing using Panglin and Nextclade softwares respectively. The major differences between each of these workflows is how the read mapping, primer trimming, and consensus genome calling is performed due to the differences in read data. For both ONT and Clear Labs data, the Arctic bioinformatics pipeline is utilized to perform these steps. So, as per the Arctic protocol, read mapping is performed using Minimap2, and both primer trimming and consensus genome assembly is performed with the ONT Medaca pipeline. For Illumina data, both single N and paired N, a custom workflow is utilized that includes read trimming by Trimomatic, adapter and PhiX removal with BBDuck, read mapping with BWA, and both primer trimming and consensus genome assembly is performed with the IVAR software package. And when I say custom, please note that this is a common approach for consensus genome assembly, not unique to these Titan workflows. The custom bit is just the ways in which we've written these steps out in our Whittle workflow. And as I mentioned before, once these consensus genomes are generated, all four workflows will generate QC metrics for both the consensus assembly and the read data itself, and then do lineage and clade typing with Panglin and Nextclade. Understanding QC, lineage, and clade typing outputs for these workflows can be a bit overwhelming at first, so we'll be releasing a future video dedicated to these outputs and how to properly interpret them. For now, as an introduction to these workflows, just know that these are the general categories of outputs generated by these Titan workflows and that from your Terra workspace, you'll end up with a data table that will be populated with these outputs. And these tables can be assessed within the Terra environment itself, as shown here, or exported to Excel for further analysis and sharing. All right, so next we'll hop on over to our Terra training workspace and I'll show you how to use the Titan Clear Labs workflow. 
For those of you interested in the Titan O&T workflow, you're going to follow pretty much the exact same steps as when using the Titan Clear Labs workflow, as these data are so similar. And for those interested in a tutorial to use the Titan Illumina workflows, I've included a link to the V2.0 release video in the description below. But for any Titan workflow or any Terra workflow, really, there are three basic steps. And that's first selecting the appropriate workflow in your Terra workspace. In our case, this will be the Titan Clear Labs workflow. Then we'll be defining both the inputs and outputs for the workflow. And then we'll be just running the analysis. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so now we are in our Terra training workspace. And you can see here that I've got a table of 10 SARS-CoV-2 samples loaded into my workspace in this Clear Labs specimen table. And you can see that these 10 samples are associated with two different run IDs, run 0001 and run 0002. In this video, I only want to run the Titan Clear Labs workflow for samples coming off of run one. So let's keep that in mind when we start defining inputs and outputs for this workflow. Okay, so before we start, again, the basic steps for running any workflow in Terra are to one, select the appropriate workflow, in our case, Titan Clear Labs. Two, define the workflow inputs and outputs. For us, it's run one samples in the Clear Labs specimen table. And then three, running an analysis. Okay, so let's start by selecting the appropriate workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate up here to workflows. And you can see here that I already have the Titan Clear Labs workflow available to me. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the latest version that's available to me. So for me right now, it's version 1.3.2. And then let's select the root entity type or which Terra data table my input samples will be coming from. And in our case, it is the Clear Labs specimen data table. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can see by default that it selected all 10 samples to be analyzed for this workflow, but that isn't what we want. Instead, we want to make sure that we only select samples associated with run one. So to get those samples specifically, we'll go ahead and select data and then click choose specific rows to process. From here, I can use this search bar to look for samples that are associated with run underscore zero 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 one and hit enter and boom here are my five samples so then I'll go ahead and click this top left check mark here to ensure that I select every sample that is viewable on this table and then I'll hit OK OK now that I've selected which samples to analyze I need to further define which elements of those samples should be fed in as inputs to the Titan Clear Labs workflow and the required inputs are these two that say required up here at the top. And that's the clear lab FASTQ data and the sample name for each sample. And everything else under here are optional parameters. For most users, you really won't have to worry much about these parameters as the default settings have already been optimized for clear labs data. The one parameter you may want to update in the future is this pangolin docker image input, but I'll go ahead and save that for a future video. For now, we'll just focus on these two required inputs. Okay, so for the clear lab FASTQ, I'm going to type this dot reads to indicate that the reads column of our clear lab specimen table contains paths to our read data that we want analyzed. And for a sample name, I'm going to type this dot clear lab specimen ID to indicate that the Clear Lab specimen ID column, i.e., the first column in the Clear Lab specimen table, contains this sample name for each sample being analyzed. All right, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to outputs. And for this and pretty much every workflow, I'm going to just select Use Defaults and allow it to populate the default outputs. And then from here, I'm going to hit Save and then hit Run Analysis. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Launch. All right, and boom, the analysis is initiated and we are generating SARS-CoV-2 consensus assemblies, 
getting the QC metrics associated with both the read data and the assemblies themselves and performing lineage and clay typing for these five samples. And that's it for this video. In a future one, we'll go over in more detail the outputs and how to interpret them. But for now, I hope that this was clear for everyone and that you were all able to learn a little bit from this video. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and we will be sure to clarify as much as we can. Thank you all and I will see you in the next one.